All right, oxygen sensor, real quick, down here. Check this out. I left the lead in there. I left the test lead there. What did I just do? What did I just do? That was weird. All right, yo, look. Oxygen sensor signals. It's at 0 .08. Yep. That's a lean condition. When we snap the throttle. Sorry, hold on. Let me make sure I'm making connection. I think maybe I wasn't making connection on that. There's 0 .3, 0 .2. It should be going from 0 .2 to 0 .8. Let me raise the RPM. And fuel. Yeah. That's a bad O2 sensor, it looks like. Okay. Was it black? Okay. That's what's happening. Here, come here. Adding a fuel source, extremely flammable brake clean. We want to make sure it's flammable. Some brake cleaner is not. It's going lean again on us. <laughs> so, what I need to know is that a false lean or is that an actual lean? And this brake clean, ideally we would want carb clean. You don't want to burn brake clean because it makes some nasty gases, but we're outside. The reason I think it's a false lean is because of the black smoke I saw. So that's my, my leaning is that way. This is reading minus 0.2 right now. Stay focused on the meter. Like you don't want to see negative voltage, volt, voltage on an O2 either. I'm going to add some uh, little, Cleaning the intake right here. Did you see how it went to 0 0.6? 0 0.6 is not enough. It should have went to 0.8 on that. Now sensor's got to be hot to work. I just don't believe these numbers I'm seeing from this sensor. What I want to try to see if we can make this do it again when it's real, when it drops real lean and starts stalling, I'm going to give it some fuel. So if I hit that, that should, that should jump to 0.8. Here it's stalling the engine out. It only went to 0.6, that's not enough. That sensor's garbage, just from that standpoint alone. Let's watch, let's watch this possible lean condition unfold on us again. It's either over fueling right now. Here, running real bad, running real bad. Trying to give it gas. See how fuel didn't help it? Go ahead, start it. I believe because it's over fueling. Yeah, because we're, we're already getting too much fuel. All right, let's watch it. When it starts choking out, right there. Oh, maybe it is an actual lean condition. Let's watch it again, see if I can pick it back up. Right now it's lean. Lean, 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 right? Give it, give it a little bit of fuel. It is going rich. Interesting. It is an actual lean condition. I was wrong. This, the, even though the O2 won't go to 0.8, the O2 is not our issue here. So we're lean, 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 lean. Very lean. More than it ever should be a negative voltage. See, I can, I can drive it rich for sure. Yeah, there's a 0.8. The hard part about these older cars is there's no fuel trim data to look at. 
So determining what am I what am I seeing here, an actual rich condition or an actual lean condition is still debatable, but I, this is looking like it's possibly possibly a lean condition. Right, right there, it's pretty lean. Give it some fuel, I can drive it rich. So it's not a false lean like I was thinking and overfueling. Your question of the black smoke, I don't know. You see how lean that went, how I couldn't bring it back? This is, a, this is an actual lean condition. So what we need to do from this point forward, I need to get a fuel pressure gauge on this. Make sure we're not dropping fuel pressure, that's number one. Um, number two is gonna be to revisit those sensors and make sure we don't have something wigged out. Go ahead, start it back up, Bo. That went to 1.2 volts cranking, that was weird. Worry about my computer grounds when I see something like that. I really wanna get a fuel pressure gauge on this. So let me just do some real quick checks on this. My meter, I think my battery's about dead on my meter too, which is like making it do some goofy stuff. Okay, some real quick checks over here that we did before and we're gonna end this for now. Come back, we'll do another video on, on this stalling condition. TPS signal. That's my idle contact switch. Why is that at 12? So that's at 12 volts and should be dropping. That's staying at 12. Shouldn't be doing that. TPS signal voltage, that's good. But my idle contact switch is stuck at 12 volts. And that's gonna really mess it up when you're trying to, when you're trying to rev it. Basically, that's your electronic accelerator pump that that should be dropping to zero as soon as I touch the throttle. That is, there you go, now we're at zero. So here we go, 12 when I open it. Zero, 12, zero. So it was stuck basically in the open throttle position. Start that back up, Bo. That's what we want is zero volts. It was fixed at 12, which, which shouldn't have mattered. I think it's still gonna end up doing what it was doing. Let's, let's watch it for a minute. So we have a sticking idle contact switch in the TPS. That is your electronic accelerator pump. When you open the throttle and that changes to 12 volts, the computer does an extra shot of fuel with the fuel injectors is what that signal is used for. It being fixed at 12 shouldn't have made it do what it was doing. Is it starting to do it? It is, okay. So a problem, not the problem. Start it back up, stay focused here. All right, so our issue and our stalling, yes, we have an issue with the idle contact switch, but that's not our issue as far as it's stalling out and looks like a lean condition. Um, TPS signal is good. That's the one up from that. There's 0.29. As I open the throttle, we're good on that front. Let's go down to the coolant temp sensor real quick. 0.4 on the ECT, totally fine hot engine type number. Go ahead, start it. Our problem is not our coolant temp sensor as far as like overfueling, underfueling. 0.4, totally fine hot engine numbers. All right, shut it off, Bo. I wanna focus on our mass airflow now and our fuel pump switch. Make sure we're not like dropping the fuel pump cut off. Now I can get to the door. Keys on, right, Bo? Okay, so fuel pump switch should be white, white, black. This should be 12 volts right now. Nope, that's zero. So, that's my ground wire. Let's go to the green wire next to it. This one should be 12. Yeah. And then when I open the door, that should drop to zero, and it does. So, that is your fuel pump turning on. It's a ground side switch circuit through the airflow meter. Push the door open, voltage drops. Let go of the door, voltage rises. Do okay? Push the door open. Voltage drops to zero, fuel pump's running. Let that off, 
fuel pump is off. So without a pressure gauge on it, let's watch that number. When he starts it, that should drop to zero. Go ahead, start it, Bo. And then when this thing dies on us, we're gonna watch this. We're just gonna make sure that that relay is staying grounded is what we're doing right here. Car's dying, car's dying. Still got a good fuel pump ground. Still got a good fuel pump ground. Our, we never lost fuel pump ground through the airflow meter. So it's not an airflow meter switch problem. Okay, that's what that to test told us. This one should be our signal. Do you need to switch batteries now, Caleb? Let me just make sure we got a signal here on the door. What's that, three volts? And then as I push the door open with my fingers, all right? All the way open goes to 7.7 volts. Start it back up, Bo. Yeah. It looks like this signal's fine too. Go, go ahead and um, go ahead and switch batteries. We'll catch this stall real quick. I want to know if my fuel pump, if I'm losing fuel pressure. I believe this is a lean condition. Best place to check fuel pressure on these is, oh, it just shot me in the eye. It, I'd say that there's fuel pressure. So ideally what you'd want to do is wrap a towel around there, right? Which I did not do, but Toyota made this really nice for us as far as doing a measurement for fuel pressure because we can do it right here. You just have to have the right adapters. And I happen to have the right adapters. So I'm going right where the cold start injector is because that goes to the main rail. Oh, we should be good to measure our fuel pressure. Okay, fuel pressure. Make sure I don't have no leaks. All right, Bo, go ahead and start it. Oh. All right. It's, I didn't like the way that that rose. We're dropping fuel pressure. See how it's pulsing too? It's, you hear that, that pop? That's an intake backfire. That's a lean condition. Dropping pressure. a fuel pump problem before we make the call on the pump we got to do power and ground checks back there we already did them ori originally but i want to check them again i want to make sure we're not losing a ground back there this was just the mass airflow signal i know that that's fine now to answer your question caleb which is a really good one which is what about the black smoke well i don't have an answer for you on that whenever it was acting up on us it was surging on us, so it's very possible that the pulse width was fattened up really, really high from a lean O2 and very, very positive trim numbers. And then the fuel pressure came back and uh, real quick. And then that would have led to a massive amount of overfueling momentarily. And so that was, look at it drop and drop and drop and look at fuel pressure. This is why you do troubleshooting guys. You don't throw parts at a car. And, you know, a lot of you guys that are driving these cars, nice. A lot of you guys that are driving these cars, you don't know how to do these checks. The simple mass airflow check, the simple fuel pump switch in the mass airflow check or vein airflow meter to be accurate. The simple checks on the TPS and the idle contact switch, the simple checks on the engine coolant temp sensor. And then you guys are lost and you start throwing parts at the car. And then you end up building in a problem when if you know how to troubleshoot, you can avoid all of that stuff. This is absolutely, absolutely a fuel pressure problem. You guys just saw what happened there. It is not time to put a fuel pump in this yet. Next up, we'll be addressing this intermittent low fuel pressure problem pump itself let's get fuel pump colors and make sure because there's going to be some evap stuff in here too or float level stuff let's see what pump is blue black and white black white black's the ground so what i need is a long jumper wire to go up front to the battery we'll try it here i don't like to trust this in a scenario like this so i'll go after the power feed which is the blue black Okay, I got 35 PSI fuel pressure. 
I got 13 volts. So 13.2. So we'll call that a good ground where I am. And then we'll do a ground to ground voltage drop test. Steady 0.15. Nothing wrong with that ground. What's the max reading you'd want to see throughout the ground? Sensor ground, no more than 100 millivolts, but anything that's drawing a considerable amount of current, um, it, it will change. Yeah, so what we want to do first, we'll watch this 13.3 while the fuel pressure is dropping. How's your number look? My, volt, my pressure dropped there, it should not have. It dropped to 25 on a rev. How was your voltage? So up is good, down is not. And this pulsing that's going on with my pump, that voltage is steady, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it will move some with charging system, but yeah, pretty steady. And my pump right now is dying. My pressure's dropping. How's your voltage? It's going to drop a little bit as RPM drops. I'm down to 20 PSI. But that's only because the alternator drops. So we never, we never lost, we never lost charging. We never lost voltage to this pump. The only reason that you saw it drop was when the RPM got real, real low. Okay. So that means my pump power is good. Going to the fuel pump ground now. Where's your tank uh, showing you, Bo? Quarter tank you're showing? Okay. All right, this is gonna be our ground test this time, Caleb. You're showing what, 0 0.15? This pump is weak. That shouldn't be fluctuating like that. Pretty steady ground, right, Caleb? should rise there on a snap. How's my ground voltage? Yeah, this is, my, my pressure's dropping on a rev. It should be increasing. Even if we don't get this to stall on us here, uh, we'll, uh, we'll wait. You guys might be wondering about the fuel filter. Fuel filter's brand new. This is not a fuel filter issue. This is a pump problem. There we go, 25. 20, 20, car is going to stall. All right, so we're done. That, that's enough info to put a pump in this. One of the things that Bo and I were worried about when we first started this was the pump itself and we put some gas in it. Um, the only other thing that this could be would be the tank being low on fuel. We're showing quarter tank and Bo and I put at least five gallons in this. Uh, and it, it has not run that long. So we know we have fuel in it. I'm gonna order a fuel pump for this. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get you guys after pressure readings once we install the pump. And then we'll continue with our, our troubleshooting of this car and you know, getting it ready, ready to go for Bo to, to um, start driving it. So I um, hope you guys learned something on that. Um, we'll pick you guys up in, in a follow-up video with the new fuel pump in it and also uh, I'm probably gonna order a throttle position sensor because of the switch that's sticking for the idle contact switch. Unless I can maybe take that apart and clean it up, we'll see. Uh, but that'll come up next. So stay with us, stay focused on this channel. We will have a follow-up for this for you guys. Thanks for joining us with me and my family. We love having you guys along. We'll see you on the next one. Anything to say, Bo? No? If you don't wanna tell the world how great of a you are at driving a stick <laughs> i feel like if anything it just really reflects you as a father that you did not teach your sons to drive a stick it doesn't look good no they all say standard enter's really good with the stick <laughs> we'll end it on we'll end it on that one